For years now, I've been relying on the tried and tested performance of the ball head. Its versatility and ease of use has made it my go-to when it comes to tripod heads. But what if there was something better, more tailored to my specific needs? So as you can see, I've been around the block when it comes to tripod heads. I'm just gonna give a brief overview as far as what I've used throughout the years, and then I'm gonna talk about what I'm using these days. So first we'll start off with this classic here from Bogan. Uh, this is the 3262. I don't know how old this is exactly. I did find this in a catalog from, the, uh, from 1994, so around there I would have to guess. Uh, it was a good head, but there's one fatal flaw that I didn't like about it that was, uh, it was lacking a feature that I find absolutely crucial that I think most of us would, and that is the ability to pan. This doesn't have it. This just has the one single control knob on here that allows you to just manipulate the ball head itself. From there, I moved on to this. This is the B0 from Benro. Bit of an upgrade, holds, um, it held enough weight for the most part. Um, I did have some stability issues when it came to uh, the underside here. There used to be a silver kind of a washer in place here and it was covering these three screws. Unfortunately, those screws came loose and was really causing this to wobble quite a bit when it was sitting on top of the tripod. So I pried that off, just tightened those down, and that was better. But I still had some other issues. For one, if you didn't loosen the pan knob enough, you kind of feel a little bit of grinding inside the panning plate itself here. Um, and then secondly, because of how many knobs there are and because of its small size, the knobs kind of would interfere with each other. So for example, if I wanted to go backwards with or point the camera upwards and I just had these too close to each other, you can see they're touching each other. If I wanted to do a vertical shot, like so, slot this into the side. Now bear in mind, back in the day, I didn't have an L plate for my camera. So if I wanted a vertical orientation, this is how I had to do it. But the problem with this route is because if you have both of these knobs here, now this is the pan and then this is of course the plate itself, they're gonna interfere with each other as well. And it's not gonna let you actually move that. Now, everything had a workaround, sure. I could turn this around, make sure this is pointing to the front and then I can move this freely. But it was just one of those things that just got in the way and it was just more trouble than it was worth. Next, I moved on to this. This is the C-Ray K30X. Bit of a bigger ball head and fewer controls. I thought that this was gonna be a, a good solution for me. I have the one knob on the back here for panning. I have the other one here for the ball head itself. The problem that I've dealt with this though is this little tiny screw here on the side of the, the main knob. What this does is that it affects how far this knob will turn, essentially affecting the tension on it. For some reason, uh, whenever I was out and about, I would always somehow end up bumping this thing. And over time, it would just tighten more and more and more. So that way, when I actually got to my destination and wanted to shoot, this thing was almost all the way in. And when I'd go to unlock it, there was just still very little movement to it. And it was just an absolute pain. So after having these two, we'll call them somewhat inexpensive ball heads, I finally decided, you know what? Well, let's move on to something that is a bit more substantial, a bit better built. So I moved on to this here from Really Right Stuff. This is the BH30. It's small, but it does still hold enough weight for me. At this point, I had moved on to my Micro Four Thirds setup where at most I'm gonna have a couple of pounds on here. So this is definitely more than sufficient to hold the weight. Again, we still have two knobs on it. One here on the side, and this is a nice machined aluminum. This on the side just controls the pan itself, which even if I just do it loosely, it's still nice and smooth panning. And then on the side, we have one knob that controls the ball head itself as well as the tension. The more you loosen it, the looser the head becomes. So you loosen it just a little bit like so, you get a little bit of tension in there. Loosen it all the way and then it just, it'll flop right around. So I used this setup here for probably about a year until I started to learn that really ball heads just weren't for me. See, the problem was, and I'm just gonna grab a, one of my small point and shoot cameras here just to show as a demonstration. Once I had my camera set up here on a tripod and I go to set up my composition, once I had everything in place, like lock it in place, I'm like, okay, cool. That's what I want. And actually, you know what? I wanna make just a slight adjustment. So you loosen the knob a bit, you try to make that slight adjustment, but accidentally I would sometimes maybe tilt the camera a little bit. 
or maybe I'd spin it just a little bit. And it was just kind of this long process for me to get that composition dialed in exactly what I wanted. And because of that extra complication, it was really taken away from the creative process. So essentially what I learned was I want to be able to make easy, small adjustments to my composition. Now you might think that that would take us to something like a, a geared head. And that was definitely something that I was considering for a bit, but I realized that those had their own, their own sets of problems. For one, they're, a lot, they're quite a bit bigger, uh, a lot of them. Looking at those, I felt they're just too big, they're too bulky. I still want the ability to make some quick adjustments with it as well. And the geared head just didn't really allow for that. So I did a little bit more searching and I came across another photographer on YouTube by the name of Hudson Henry. Some of you may have heard of him, and he is a big proponent of using a fluid head for photography. Essentially, this was his recommendation right here. This is the um, Manfrotto MVH 500AH, and then on top of this, as per his recommendation, I have the Kirk Bridge conversion kit that basically just takes it from the Manfrotto uh, proprietary plate system that they have to an Arca Swiss type. And you know what, I thought this, this might be the solution. Yes, it's kind of big, it's kind of bulky, but it does allow you those, those nice, easy sweeping movements without any problem. And you still get that precision that I was looking for. A couple things to note when it comes to this particular setup. For one, because of the uh, layout here of this plate and based on how the fluid head is designed, you wanna have your camera balanced on here. So in order to have it balanced, you also need to have a nodal rail on top of that. This sets right on top of here, clamps into place, and then this is going to allow me to put my camera on top of it so that way I can get proper balance. Now this thing doesn't weigh anything because this is not my primary camera, but you just slide it back and forth until you get that proper balance so that way as this is unlocked, it's not gonna flop back and forth. Well, as you can see, this, this is kind of a large setup and after going out with it just once on a relatively short hike, it just was too much for me. Typically, I'm gonna have this on top of my tripod strapped to the, my camera backpack on my right side. And as I was walking around, I could just kind of feel the, the, that extra weight from this side just because the weight is up top here and pulling me backwards. So I decided, you know what? I don't think this is gonna be the setup for me. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a great setup if you have the kit to support it. Now, Hudson, he is a, a Nikon shooter. He shoots with a Nikon Z9 big pro camera. On top of that, he also uses some really big glass. So he has like a 400 millimeter 2.8, the 600 millimeter 5.6, really big bulky pieces of glass. And fluid head of this size is going to be beneficial for him. But for someone like me shooting with a micro four third system and my kit combined is only about just shy of five pounds, this, this is just complete overkill. So that moved on to my next head. Enter the pan and tilt head. True to its name, it has two functions. You can either loosen this knob on the back here and pan it, or you can loosen the knob on the side here and you can tilt it. Now, before we get too far into talking about this particular head here, I do wanna talk about one other thing, and that has to do with leveling your tripod. See, when it comes to most types of ball heads, you really don't have to be too concerned with your, your tripod being perfectly level, right? Because no matter how far off this is, you, you can always keep your, your plate relatively level, and that's not going to be a problem. But when you're using something like a fluid head or the pan and tilt, you don't have that extra bit of freedom. So you need to level your tripod in other means. First way that you can do it is just simply wrestling with the legs, making slight adjustments on it to get everything nice and level. Problem is this can be time consuming. And honestly, there's, there's a lot easier ways out there to do this. Uh, one method you can look at is by just buying a tripod that has a leveling base built into it. For example, here's one from uh, Leo Photo. I have no affiliation with them. It's just one that came up here. Um, and this has a bowl built right into the base that you can make adjustments on in order to get a nice level base. What I did instead though, because I have a perfectly good tripod, is I just simply bought a leveling base that sits on top of the tripod itself. So this just simply sits between the legs on the bottom and the head on top here. And essentially there's a collar in place here that you can just simply loosen. And with that, this part of the uh, adapter can just simply move back and forth as so, and that's gonna allow you to level off your base and get that just perfect. Now this one is the Leo Photo LB60N. 
I'm gonna have a link for this stuff down in the description. But the reason I went for the Leo Photo one is just due to how much uh, room for adjustment there is. A lot of the other adapters out there only allow for about 10 degrees of movement uh, in either direction, whereas the Leo Photo allows for 15 degrees. And that little bit of extra movement is going to really give you some additional freedom so you don't really have to worry about keeping your tripod uh, too close to level. So that, in conjunction with this head here, which again, is just gonna sit right on top like so, is gonna allow you to just level off your shot here, you lock the collar down, and boom, you're good to go. This particular head here is the Sunway Photo uh, DT-03. When I bought this one, honestly, I was taking a little bit of a gamble. Most of the heads out here, you can find some resources to kind of give you an idea as far as their features, the reliability, and how they are just to use. The Sunway, there just really wasn't any information out there. There's about two separate reviews on uh, Amazon, which I didn't really find all that helpful. Really nothing in YouTube uh, with, for this particular head. So. I took a risk and I'm glad I did. This is actually doing exactly what I need it to do. It allows me to make those micro adjustments, but still make some big sweeping movements when I need to. Now there is something important I wanna to touch on before I end this, and that is when it comes to vertical shots. Now, as I pointed out to you before, if you wanna do a vertical shot with a ball head, you just simply take the clamp itself and slide it down here into the side, all right? That's specifically what it was designed for and you can make your vertical shot like that. You don't have that option, unfortunately, when it comes to using something like a, a pan and tilt or a video fluid head. So what I recommend simply doing, just make sure you have an L plate, all right? I don't have one on here, because uh, again, I don't, I don't even know if they make an L plate for this, for this particular guy here. Um, but essentially, what that allows you to do is just simply, instead of having your camera sit like this, this plate would extend along the side and you can just simply Turn your camera, put it right on the side, and now you can get that vertical shot you're looking for. Makes it nice and easy for you. Also, something I want to point out with this particular head as well, because this was a common question that I had myself when I was looking for these, is with regards to the orientation of the clamp itself. These two screws here comes with an Allen key. Just simply remove those screws and you can rotate the plate on top so that way if you want to use something like a nodal rail like I have on the fluid head here or if you have a, a long lens that you want to use a tripod foot for uh, you can just turn this around so that way it works for you that way as well. But I think I finally have, dare I say, the perfect tripod head for my particular needs. But I'm curious about what you think. Are you one that's stuck with a ball head and made that actually work for you really well? Do you like a geared head? Maybe you do already have a pan and tilt and have some experience with it. Let me know down in the comment section down below. Now, if you found this video helpful and you wanna see more content related to photography tips and tricks, as well as other product reviews, please consider subscribing to the channel. Your support really does mean the world to me and it lets me know that I am actually making the content that you wanna see. Now, I understand subscribing to a channel sometimes can be too much of a commitment, but if you still like the video anyway, please give it a thumbs up and that really does help. But hey, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.